Here on this Enzyme Lab, we're going to use common household items such as potato, carrots, and mushrooms, along with hydrogen peroxide to study the catalyzed enzyme. Okay, so here we're going to be looking at a catalase enzyme normal reaction. We're looking at catalase contains in this potato. We're going to be looking at potato and how it reacts to hydrogen peroxide. This is typical store-bought and this is looking at about 3% hydrogen peroxide here. So we're going to see how this reacts and look at some observations. Here we're going to observe a normal catalase reaction. So I've cut a piece of potato and we're going to add that to the test tube. I've got the four mils of hydrogen peroxide located right there. So let me just drop that in and let's just observe what happens. Seeing that slow release there, seeing the concentration of those bubbles forming at the top. Again, this is just a regular potato and 3% hydrogen peroxide. So here we are back at our first reaction. We're noticing that it's still reacting a little bit, but is definitely slowed down. So we're going to progress with this portion of the lab now. Now reading the lab instructions, are, we're instructed to take the liquid from test tube one, this is test tube one here, and put it into a second test tube. So all I'm going to do is take the liquid from here, and we're simply going to pour it into our second test tube, trying to make sure we don't also include the potato. So it's pouring off that liquid, decanting that liquid there. Okay, so now I've got uh, the liquid poured off from the first test tube, put it into the second, and the question now asks, well, what would happen if I added another piece of potato? So I've cut a fresh piece of potato of similar size, similar surface area. We're gonna add it here to the test tube, and we're gonna see what happens for the reaction. So I drop it in there. Let's take a quick observation. And if we look here at the test tube, we are seeing some bubble formation. But that is a fresh piece of potato, and we can clearly see that the reaction rate is definitely reduced than we saw with the first reaction there. So important to keep in mind that of the variability that we have here, in the sense that while we have um, that catalase enzyme is at the same concentration. Here the reactants uh, aren't fully there. We've reacted a lot of the hydrogen peroxide away. And while there is still some left, overall that reaction is greatly reduced from when we saw it before. Now in contrast here, we're looking at that first piece of potato. And what I have now is the same four mils of hydrogen peroxide there, a fresh four mils of hydrogen peroxide, and I'm going to add it to our original potato and see what happens here for a reaction. As, as we can see there, and I spilled just a little bit, looking very closely there, add just a little bit more, make sure that they're even, so we get the same amount, there's the amount that I spilled. So there, now for looking at the reaction, we too see it reacting, but reacting very slowly. Compared to the initial reaction, you can see that that is definitely much reduced. And if we do a quick comparison, looking at kind of a normal size, normal potato, we'll see that there is a difference. So for comparison purposes, if I take that fresh four mils of hydrogen peroxide and a brand new uh, fresh potato and I add it there, we can see the difference now in reaction rate. Again, it takes just a couple seconds to get going, uh, but we are noticing definitely more bubbles being produced here with the fresh potato and fresh hydrogen peroxide compared to the potato that already went through a reaction we, and we then added fresh hydrogen peroxide. Here was the 
decanted hydrogen peroxide, the ones that had went through the reaction, with a fresh piece of potato. And again, those, these two are reacting somewhat, but definitely much reduced now, we can see, compared to the original. And this goes back to products and reactants as far as how much do we have of each, and when one is used up, the, it becomes a limiting reactant. And this is just a great visual to kind of show that, looking specifically at the catalase enzyme. So here I have some different food items, and we're going to assess the amount of catalase enzyme they have based on their reaction with hydrogen peroxide. So I've got the potato, I've got the carrot, and I've got a mushroom. I've cut sections here, try to keep the surface area the same, and I'm going to now add them to the respective test tubes, and we're going to see how the reaction rates may differ in relation to the amount of catalase enzyme each of these contains. So I'm going to add the, try to add them at the same time. Those two. So again, the more bubble production we're associating with greater catalase enzyme. Just to keep everything consistent, that that reaction. Make sure they're all submerged in that. Potatoes down there. So again, looking at our rate of reaction. Sure they're all kind of coming in contact adequately. Let's kind of see the differences that might be occurring. So now we're going to look at and see how temperature will affect this catalase enzyme. And here we have a piece of potato. And I've tried to keep all the potato pieces consistent. We have this in a warm water bath. So when we say warm water, well, what does that actually mean? Well, let's take the temperature of our warm water bath there. We're going to let this sit in there for approximately maybe five minutes or so just to ensure the potato chunk is fully exposed to that temperature. But just under 64, 63.7 is where it has settled out. And this is our warm, warm water bath here. Moving on from warm water, we're going to go to the ice water bath. So ice water bath, here I have just kind of some ice water, it is melting. Uh, kind of determine what the temperature is of that ice water. We've got our little potato literally chilling in there. Let's see. If, and as would be expected, it's much cooler. And here we're looking at not quite zero degrees Celsius, looking at about 0 0.4 um, degrees Celsius. So very close. Okay, so moving on to room temperature, we can see here the room temperature one is balanced out at 22.0 degrees Celsius. Lastly here, progressing to the boiling water one. You can see the water is boiling. I get the thermometer in there. Take a look. Looking like specifically, we're going to balance out right at 100 degrees Celsius for our boiling water potato. We'll let that sit in. So as we saw earlier, what I have now is potatoes that have been in different temperatures for approximately 10 minutes. This one was in an ice water, this one was in room temperature, this one is in a warm temperature, and this was at boiling. So what I have now is four mils of hydrogen peroxide that I'm gonna to add to each, and we will now see how they react, uh, these potatoes, after being in these different environments. So again, as the ice water. This one is room temperature. And then we have warm water. And then we have boiling water. Okay, so this shows a difference in temperature that everything was exposed to. Here we have hydrogen peroxide that was chilled in an ice water bath. This was the hydrogen peroxide was kept at room temperature. 
This is where it was warmed in the warm water bath. And here, the potato was left at boiling. So in all of these cases, we boiled the potato, we warmed the potato up, we have room temperature, and then we have chilled potato and hydrogen peroxide. Now you can see as it's warming up, we are noticing that there is a little bit of a reaction occurring here. By far, the room temperature is performing the best with the greatest amount of bubbles produced. The warmed one does have a couple bu bubbles produced, but nothing really great. And the boiling one is just stagnant or sitting there. So what does this tell us about the optimum rate in temperature for the catalase enzyme? So we're looking at pH. In the first test tube here, I've added hydrochloric acid. This middle one here is regular tap water, very neutral pH. And then the last one has had its sodium hydroxide added to it. So if we're thinking about it this way, we're increasing pH from a very low pH to a neutral pH to a basic pH. So now I have prepared equal size potato pieces and we're gonna add them to this hydrogen peroxide that has had its pH adjusted, either lower, normal, or higher. And we're gonna see how they react. So again, it takes just a little while to get going. But as we look carefully, we can definitely see that the acid, this one we created right here, is at, definitely occurring at a reduced rate. Kind of with that black background, you can see the base here is reacting to some degree, but definitely that more neutral pH of seven has the greatest production there of the bubbles. But looking at this, we're definitely concluding that the pH definitely does impact the catalase enzyme. And we're noticing that there is that difference uh, in reaction. And we could see what environment the catalase enzyme would not be favorable in. Again, still able to react to some degree down at this end, at the acidic end. Uh, but we're looking at the defining the optimum rate. We can see that there's definitely a difference there.